and from the Labor Party, Patrick Gorman. Do you see this as an overreaction, Jason? Uh, no, um, Tom, I think you need to have a precautionary principle here. This seems reasonable and, um, and sensible precautions to take. And hopefully by 5pm Monday, we'll be back to normal again. Patrick, the Premier said WA would have locked down by now. Is that true? Well, look, I think that was probably a bit unnecessary. Uh, obviously, here in Western Australia, we did go through a lockdown recently and we've had since then some further cases which didn't result in a lockdown. So you have to look at each of these individual outbreaks based on the health advice you receive about the particular circumstances. That's what New South Wales has done. And I'd just say to everyone in New South Wales, I hope it is a quick period of restrictions and I hope that, uh, that the news is good over the next few days. Was that a change of heart from Mark McGowan, though? You mentioned that sort of second time when he didn't. Does he realise you can't just keep locking down at one or two cases for months, that people will get sick of it? Oh, look, I, I don't know what went through the Premier's head, but what I do know is that each time you have a different case, you have to respond to it differently. And, of course, in the period in which the, the, West Australian case, the second round of West, West Australian cases were found, uh, we had been on a range of restrictions, including extensive mask wearing, and that does appear to have prevented any further outbreak, even though that the uh, people involved in that second round of infections were uh, working as Uber food delivery drivers. So I think we're really fortunate mm. in that regard. And um, I think anything that, as I've said on this program before, no one likes these restrictions. We just accept them to be necessary. And when they're not necessary, we shouldn't do them. So I think that's a good thing. I guess the necessary judgment is the key one. Uh, what about what... Gladys Berejiklian had to say, Jason, do you agree with her? Would WA and Queensland have locked down in this circumstance, the missing link in particular? It's just a fact they would have, Tom, and they have in the past, and they'll do it in the future. And the disappointing thing about this is that in New South Wales, we don't have to lock down because the government in this state made the necessary investments that allow us to continue our lives because they have the track and tracing capability and governments in other states decided not to make those investments, and in Victoria the death toll was over 800 people because of it. So, you know, that's just a historical fact. Uh, what do I want to ask about JobMaker, Jason. Interested in what the talking points are on this one. I'm sure you'll reveal them because this was a centrepiece of the budget that's just been quietly dropped. Apparently it's just a complete flop. Uh, well, Tom, it's one of those programs that you... Uh, well, firstly, can I say, I, ca I, I don't know what's going to happen in the budget. Um, second thing that I would say is that it's one of those programs that you want to flop um, because it's a program that basically says, you know, uh, use this program if you can't get people back into work. Now, what all the statistics are showing, what, what we know from both private and public sector economists is that the job market is roaring back to life, that Australia has succeeded, as I said last week, where other countries haven't even begun to fail. Uh, we have a particular moment at, um, in Australia at this present moment where we can set ourselves up for the future, where we can make sure that we have a growing economy, a sustainable economy, that will be able to support the essential services that people need to get on with their lives. There you go, Patrick, a good flop. What do you think? Uh, I'd, I'd agree that this government is a good flop. Um, <laughs> let me say this. 2019 was the back-in-back -back budget. They scrapped it. 2020 was the job maker budget. They've scrapped it. Whatever we see from Josh Frydenberg and Scott Morrison next Tuesday night, uh, it's going to stick around for about three months before they do another backflip. All right. That's pithy. I'm just going to pay that and move on because, Jason, you got a good whack at WA, so you can call that one all. I want to ask finally, though, about the Prime Minister, what he had to say this morning, Jason Delinsky. I, I don't know, Pat. Are we, happy with, are we happy with Tom keeping score? <laughs> I'm writing only, it down. Uh, it's... Only if the West wins. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see. The West, we'll see the West never wins under minutes. Tom. <laughs> Not sure what that's supposed to mean. Um, the Prime Minister, though, blaming the media for talking about the prison penalty for Australians trying to get back from India, Jason Flinsky. It was in the Health Minister's press release. It was dropped to multiple newspapers for their Saturday edition. And it's the media's fault, is it? Well, it almost inevitably always is, Tom, but unfortunately um, you're around to set the record straight. Um, look, I think the point about um, that the Prime Minister's trying to make is, is that these um, penalties have been on the books for a very long time. It wasn't something that was introduced simply for the ban, um, the temporary pause on people uh, being repatriated from India 
and that it all got conflated and there's been a lot of misinformation out of there. It is good that I think well, some sections on, of the media... Conflated? Yes, sir. The health minister chose to put it in the release. It was actually, if you look at the release and go back, it's listed before the date of the flight bans and how, that's, how long that's going to last for. This wasn't an accidental slip in. The government is refusing to own it, though, and blaming the media. No, we're not refusing to own it. I mean, this... This has been a penalty that has been in existence from the beginning of this pandemic. I mean, there's nothing new about that, but the way that it's been the reported emphasis. by some... The, mm. re, the way that it's been reported by some sections of the media um, may, has been that somehow we introduced this specifically for repatriate people who are trying to get around the Indian ban, uh, the ban on um, uh, people from India trying to return to Australia. That, that just simply wasn't true. Um, that this penalty has existed for anyone that has been trying to get around our border control measures to stop the spread of uh, this virus. I mean, the first yeah. responsibility of yeah, any you put government things is in the a health, press release. is you the, is the health, is the health, health and safety of the people. Um, but we can go back to talking about a press release if you'd like. Well, this is why the media talks about it. Um, it's been well, out there. Anyway. I'll, I'll, I'll send you a copy. Okay. You might Please do. Me. I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Tom. I really appreciate Patrick, it. Patrick, do you disagree with anything the government has done here on India? Uh, uh, look, I disagree with the choices they've made. They had a choice to either uh, find ways to get Australians home, and they, they've failed on that month after month, or they could choose to put out a media release saying that they'd send Australians to jail. They chose the media release to send Australians to jail rather than doing the detailed policy work to make sure that we get those Australians home. We always knew there were going to be second and third waves across the country. It's not... Oh, across the world, I should say. It's not a surprise that there have been outbreaks in countries like India. Uh, this would have been on their health advice and advice from the Department of Foreign Affairs and right. Trade for months. Well, they well OK, if it's no surprise... The only plan they mm. had was a media release to send people to oh, jail. Oh, yeah, I know. I mean, I, know. I, just, I just love the Labor Party. It, public policy comes down to media release. We saw how that worked under Christina Keneally. But, All look, right. if, if, well, if you knew... Well, no, 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 hang on. If you knew there was going to be a third wave, Patrick, can you tell me where the next one's going to happen? Jason, I don't know where the next outbreak is. We've got to... Oh, OK. Jason doesn't ask what the questions. Know, Tell you what, we'll what be... We do we'll know. all be in the studio next week. We're right out of time. Gladys has cost us. We'll all be in the studio next week. I need a whiteboard to be able to decode all the things Jason says. For the record, Jason, you're one. Uh, Patrick, you're one. I'll give myself one as well. So it's oh. a 3 well, I'll give time. you two, Tom. I'll give you two. Everyone wins <laughs> on Sky News.